Hello, folks. Brian Manzella coming to you from the command center for BrianManzella.com right here in New Orleans, Louisiana, home of the Super Bowl champions. And uh, I got an iPod, a golf ball, and a, a magic marker. And we're going to try to answer a question we have at BrianManzella.com forward slash forum, the famous Brian Manzella Golf Forum. And our friend John Graham, GTE uh, attendee and test passer, uh, just for fun, a theory. I have my own theory, but could someone give theirs about why there doesn't seem to be any consensus on the percentage of start direction relative to the face? Seen as low as 60 and as high as 85, even though in terms of direction, a straight shot starts exactly where the face is pointing, directionally. By the way, I'll be happy to share my theory also. We'd like to hear it, John, but let's first clarify a few things for people who uh, would like to uh, learn something from this discussion. The first thing is, is when we're talking about club face, and I'm just going to use my iPod right here, uh, imagine that this flat-ended marker lot right here is pointing out of it, see, pointing straight up, pointing directly this way. So this is the true face. So the face is not just open and closed a certain amount like a hook face driver, or something, but it's also pointing up in the air. Okay, so there's the face. Then, then the whole mass of the club head is moving in a certain direction relative to, you know, Earth here. Space, out in 3D space. Could be, you know, pointing at my bookcase over here. Could be pointing down at my Diet Coke, right, or at the microphone. So, for simplicity's sake, let's say the uh, fly angle tool box lot is pointed right at the camera and the mass of the club head goes right at the camera and hits a golf ball. Ball's gonna go directly where the path of the club head and the face was because they're the same. And in that case, there would be no what's called spin loft, the difference between the club face and the path in 3D space. <clears throat> so just to, again, for simplicity's sake, now we've got the club head uh, I mean the club face, excuse me, pointed right at the camera. And let's say instead of the path going directly at the camera, which is a little bit upward right here, it went more level to the ground while the face was pointed as much at the camera as I could make it. Okay, that would give you a completely different spin loft because now the loft of the face, let's just say 10 degrees, let's just say I tilted this thing 10 degrees. That's 10 degrees and the path of the club head, you know, the whole iPod, zero degrees now we're going to say not inside out or outside in right now but all of that still matters now the spin loft you can tilt it one way or the other and then you get the d plane right let's just this is the d plane but follow me here okay so that would give you that last example club head traveling perfectly level and straight and the face pointed 10 degrees up and also square, not in, in, you know, pointing to the right or to the left, open or closed, so to speak, in golf terminology. That's going to give you 10 degrees of spin loft. Okay, now all of a sudden at 10 degrees of spin loft, the ball is not going to start exactly where this little tool's pointing because you got friction involved. Not a whole lot of friction with 10 degrees of spin loft and a smooth iPod face, but some. So you're going to get something like 85%. So we've got two different points right here. I'll get a, a, a different color marker. I'll get the yellow marker and say that's where the club head is going. And another one, we'll turn it sideways. You can see where the face is going. That V there, that's the D plane or the spin loft. And the ball is going to start somewhere between them. That's what John's asking. Okay, now listen. There's no consensus because they got people out there still believe the ball flight laws from the mid 70s that are as wrong as, you know, anything you could possibly imagine. It might even be closer to being backwards than being correct. So you can't get a consensus among, you know, golf pros on anything because, uh, well, you know, you don't do enough research, to be honest with you. So anyway, here, here we're back to this thing now. So what percentage on that 10 degree of spin loft example I just have? Are you going to have, you know, the ball take off on? Okay, you know, the, the general consensus there of the smart people, 85%. Now, when that spin loft gets greater, let's say we've got the club face 
45 degrees up and square. And the path 10, let's say five degrees downward, which is really easy to do with a wedge. Okay, so if you delivered 45 degrees of loft and had this going 10 degrees or five degrees downward, let's say, that, that you'd have this, well, five degrees downward, everything's square now. We're gonna say everything is square. Five degrees downward, 45 degrees up on this lie angle tool, the true club face, you got 50 degrees of spin loft. That 85% thing, handy little calculator right here, probably not gonna work out very good. So 50 degrees of spin loft times 0.85 is gonna give you 42.5. Uh, you're not gonna get that. You're probably gonna get somewhat less, okay? So look at it this way. Uh, that might be closer to the 60 degrees, or 60% or 65%. What if you had a club face that was pointed straight up like this, okay? Well, let's say one degree. One degree pointed, you know, we have, uh, instead of 90 degrees of loft, we had 89 degrees of loft and we had the club traveling level. You'd have 89 degrees of spin loft. Um, you see where I'm pointing? You got much more friction involved and less direct hit, and that's going to influence how much the face. I mean, I don't know, 89 degrees. It's it's still it's still somewhat going to go up in the air, but is it going to go you know straight up in the air at 89 degrees? No, that would be like the original example. Is it going to go 85 degrees? No. Is it going to go 60? Maybe. Maybe it goes less than that. The only real answer, there's probably some math involved. We could probably get somebody like Dr. Zick to, uh, to do, a, um, do a calculation for us. But if anybody needs more explanation beyond that and just has to know, you know, at 125 miles an hour club head speed versus 100 with a driver and 10 degrees of spin loft or my new Cleveland CG15 wedge with 100 grooves in it compared to the back of this iPod with the same spin loft same speed if somebody needs more clarification i'd be happy to um send an email off to dr wood and um and get you a, a better answer but hopefully this will tell you one why there's no consensus just like there's no consensus on how to teach golf and there never will be and two at least you know what we know uh the people who try to stay up on things about spin loft and the differences between high friction contact, let's say like the 50 degree example, or low friction like the 10 degree example. Hope this helps.